Hello everyone, welcome to Carnivorous Plants Hub. Today we're going to be tackling one of the trickiest and probably least fun parts of growing Venus flytraps, winter dormancy. Why are we tackling dormancy now? Well, just take a look outside. Winter is coming. Or, actually it looks like it's already here. Join me as we go over the 10 tips that will have you tackling dormancy like a pro, whether it's extreme colds, extreme heat, or maybe it's something in between. I think I have a tip here that'll help you become the dormancy master. Let's go ahead and get started. Tip number one, and maybe the most important tip, is to make sure that you're reducing your water. When temperatures go down and light is reduced, your plant will not use as much water. It's really easy when it's darker and colder to rot your Venus flytrap by overwatering. Crown rot is actually a huge assassin of Venus flytraps during winter dormancy. Watering rules really don't change much here, you just need to water your plant less frequently. One big tip I recommend with watering is to get familiar with the weight of your pot. Learn its weight right before you water it and also learn its weight right after you water it. While you're learning the weight of your pot, what you can do is you can stick your finger in the substrate to your first knuckle or about a half an inch. If it's dry down that far, you probably know that it's time to give your plant some water. Just keep in mind that water sticks around much longer. A reduction in water is almost always necessary during dormancy. Tip 1.5. Sometimes the best solution for winter dormancy is to get a carnivorous plant that actually doesn't require it. Did you know that there's some amazing carnivorous plants out there that don't need any type of winter dormancy? They just grow for you year round with the same conditions. Maybe a sundew or a ping or even an apenthes will be easier for you. But check this out here real quick so you can learn how to get one of those plants and we'll be right back with the rest of my Venus flytrap dormancy tips. I'm super pumped about teaming up with California carnivores. They're one of the most experienced and knowledgeable carnivorous plant nurseries in the entire world. They have a massive selection year-round of all types of carnivorous plants. There will definitely be something in their nursery you fall in love with. On top of that, they've also been generous enough to offer my viewers an exclusive 10% discount on their order when they enter CP Hub at checkout. That's CP Hub. Head on over and pick out yourself a new carnivorous plant to add to your collection. You know you deserve it. Let's go ahead and get back to the video. Tip number two. This is a simple one, but an easy one. Try to use a larger planter. If you know that your temperatures will be consistently below 32 degrees Fahrenheit, try to use a larger planter that will actually use more substrate. The more substrate that you surround your roots and rhizome with, the actually more insulated your plant will be. This is a method of overwintering your flight trap and can help it survive when temperatures get consistently below freezing. Tip number three, trim the dead growth before putting your plant into dormancy. It's really important to prune any dead growth on your fly traps as you enter dormancy. In the colder months, they become more susceptible to rot, mold, and mildew. Dead growth is a prime spot for mold and mildew to collect and infect your Venus fly trap. Keeping the dead growth pruned and out of the pot helps your fly trap stay healthy and avoid the mold and mildew that can harm it. On top of it being healthier for the plant, it's also much easier on the eyes when the death gro dead growth is trimmed away. Tip number four. Mistaking dormancy for a plant that's dying. It's really common for some people who don't understand dormancy to think that their flytrap is dying during the colder months. You get a pretty wide range in how flytraps look during dormancy. Some flytraps that are greener in variety don't lose a lot of leaves and stay looking pretty healthy for most of the dormancy. Some of the more red varieties will have more flytraps die and shrivel. Growth is going to slow down considerably and even halt for some plants. Don't mistake this and think that your plant is dying. It's also important to recognize the signs of a plant that is dying. If you see a leaf turn completely black over the span of a day or two, this is a really good sign that something is wrong. This usually means that there's rot and you may be giving your plant too much water. Reduce your water immediately and let the plant dry out a bit before watering again. Tip number five, reducing light and temperature. This is a big one as this is actually the foundation of winter dormancy for Venus flytraps. The best way to trigger dormancy is to reduce photoperiod and temperature. In their natural habitats, Venus flytraps experience a reduction in temperature and light during the day. This is how a flytrap knows it's time to start reserving its energy and slow down growth. If you're doing dormancy indoors, it's best to find a room in your home that's unheated. If you can block or shut your vents and open a window at night to help this process. At night, you want temps to reduce to between 32 and 55 degrees Fahrenheit. It can be up to the 70s during the day, but nighttime temperatures must be reduced to trigger the dormancy. Adjust your indoor lights to be in tune with the actual night and day cycle. Reduce light as days shorten. If you keep the fly trap on a windowsill, this will kind of resolve itself. If not, you may need to use a timer to keep it on track. If you don't experience a shorter photo period, 
check the day-night cycle in Wilmington, North Carolina, where these plants grow natively. Try to match it as close as possible. If outside, you do not want your Venus flytrap to be under freezing temperatures for more than a few days at a time. Extended periods of freezing will reduce your flytrap's chance of survival. If your flytrap is kept at 40 degrees or below, it will suspend any growth and does not actually need any light. This is not ideal as dormancy goes better when growth is slowed down rather than stopped completely. But it is an option if you can't get your temperatures above 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Try to avoid anything under 32 degrees Fahrenheit for more than a few days at a time. In low light and temperatures, monitoring your water will be critical as they rot very easily in these conditions. Uh, keep in mind, we're actually gonna touch on what to do to overwinter your plant here in a little bit if your temperatures do go below 32 degrees Fahrenheit often. Tip number six is for those of you who live in warmer weather climates year round. In places like Hawaii where you have warm weather year round, it's important to find a way to reduce your temperatures overnight for a good three months out of the year. Maybe find a small room you can seal off and put in a small air conditioning unit at nighttime. Try to reduce the temperature to between 32 and 55 degrees Fahrenheit. It's okay if the temperature warms up to around the 70s during the day, as long as it's getting those reduced light and temperatures for 12 to 14 hours during the night. In situations where you have no other option, you may want to place your Venus flytrap in a refrigerator for winter dormancy. This should be a very last resort as it's not ideal for, for dormancy. Make sure to use a fungicide that works with carnivorous plants so you can avoid any rot or mold while it's in the fridge. We really do recommend exploring any other options for dormancy. Using a refrigerator really should be used as an absolutely last resort. Tip number seven, if you live in an extremely cold climate. If you live in an area that has a really long and super cold winter, you will probably need to keep your fly trap indoors. If it's consistently in the single digits or below, it's going to be hard to insulate your plant enough to keep it alive in temps that cold outside. Try to find a room in your home where you can crack a window to get the temperatures down to between 32 and 55 degrees Fahrenheit during the night. You can allow them to warm up a little bit during the day up into the 70s, but try to allow them to get less light and the colder temperatures during the nighttime for at least 12 to 14 hour periods. If you must keep them outdoors, overwintering is an absolute must. The main goal when your Venus flytrap is outside is to make sure that the rhizome of the plant does not freeze solid. Let's go ahead and talk about some overwintering tips in my next one. Tip number eight, overwintering in extreme cold. Overwintering your Venus flytrap is necessary if your flytrap is outside and temperatures will go below freezing for long periods of time. I recommend covering your Venus flytraps with shade or burlap cloth. Secure the cloth or burlap down at the edges with a heavy rock or brick. This will help keep the cloth secure from wind and will help keep some of the moisture in with the plant. Cover the burlap with mulch or pine needles to further insulate. If snow happens to fall on top, allow it to stay as this will also help further insulate your plant. Using a cold frame is also a great method to help keep your plant out of the elements. Using the methods I just explained and putting your fly trap inside of a cold frame can really help insulate during these really cold temperatures. Keep in mind that once the temperatures get this low, a Venus fly trap no longer needs light since it's no longer in a growing state. Lights are just not necessary at these temperatures. Before we get to the last two tips, uh, if you found these tips useful, please pour some water on my like button, subscribe to my channel, and really help it grow. I really appreciate you being here, and, and I thank you so much. I'm really trying hard to start my own carnivorous plant nursery someday, and you liking and subscribing really, really helps me out. The other thing you can do to support my channel is use the thanks button at the bottom of the video. You can leave a monetary thank you. Obviously, the, the monetary support really helps me out. Uh, but last and not least, if you uh, see the link in the upper left of this video, I also have the link down in the video description. You can get a free printable plant tracker and printable Venus flytrap care sheet. Just enter your email and I'll send it to you 100% free and 100% free of any obligation. So thank you so much for listening to me rant about all that stuff. Let's go ahead and get to these last two tips for dormancy. Tip number nine, length of the dormancy period. I strongly recommend a dormancy period that lasts at least 12 weeks. Some claim that 10 weeks will work, but I personally never go less than 12 weeks for my plants. Some people even go as long as 20 weeks just to make sure that the plant is able to store enough energy to have a great growing season. Your area may dictate how long your dormancy period is, but if you're using an indoor method to grow your plants, it's important to give them at least 10 to 12 weeks minimum. Tip number 10 slowly inducing dormancy. 
If you grow Venus flytraps inside and want to induce dormancy in November or December, it's very important to remember to do this slowly. Shocking a Venus flytrap can definitely kill it quickly. Going from 7 degrees inside in a home to 32 degrees instantly can shock and kill the plant. You want to slowly introduce the plant to a decreased light and temperatures over a span of a couple weeks, acclimating them to the colder temps and lower light. This will help your Venus flytrap adapt and survive dormancy for longer periods. Dormancy can be really tricky, but I'm confident with these tips you'll be able to find the best method for your situation. We've talked a lot about dormancy and one common theme was watering. If you want to learn more about watering Venus flytraps, check out the video on the screen right now. Thank you so much for spending time with me today. I really hope to catch you in my next video. Bye.